You know, there's a lot of theories on it. And one of the one of the best theories is that that I've heard was that they found a pair of sandals out there that were from Jesus. So everybody else started throwing shoes out there. There's a lot of rumors about Shoe Corner. I've heard when people would go out there, lose their virginity, and leave their shoes. Every Sunday, as we drove through St. John, past Shoe Corner, I anxiously waited for my mom to stop the car so I could stick my head out the window and look at all the different shoes. Been here since 1936. Well, years ago, it, uh, there was a milk stand over there. All the farmers brought their milk, set them on the stand for the truck to pick up. And there was a creamery back there. And of course, there was the old tavern there. I have no clue why shoes are on shoe corner. <laughs> Is that what you want? Oh, yeah, the Hammond Times came in and uh, asked me if I knew anything about shoe corner. I told them no, which I don't. But uh, all I know is there's shoes there one day and somebody comes by and picks them up and they're gone and then they're back again and gone has been going on for 67 years. <laughs> Jenny. Yep. I wore mine out to the point where they don't even belong out there. I think it's pretty cool. For what reason, I don't know. I'm a guitar player for a local band called Beyond the Green Door. I've lived in the Lowell area for about 10 years. The first time I saw it, I was driving to come out in this area to look for some place to live. And we drove by it and I saw all the shoes and I didn't know what that was about. I've been town manager here about 12 years so far in St. John. Actually, I grew up just south of St. John and we moved here in 1974. So I have been here roughly my whole life. I am definitely familiar with Shoe Corner. I, Shoe Corner has been around ever since I can remember. And you talk to any of the locals around here, and as best I can tell, it's been around for 60 to 80 years. I'm um, public relations at the Law Library. I am familiar with Shoe Corner. I remember driving by Shoe Corner, wondering what the heck it was, and then asking a lot of people about it. And every time I would go by, there's more and more shoes or different shoes. I have heard of Shoe, shoe Corner. Many a times I've driven by Shoe Corner. There was like farmer, I think there's farmers out there or something and some, there was like some kids that didn't have any shoes and that um, somebody had tossed, the, the kids were like on the, you know, standing by the, um, you know, the street and stuff and they didn't have any shoes on so someone tossed them a pair of shoes. And the other story was some guy was out here begging for money and they said they didn't have shoes. There used to be an old guy who stood here looking for money. I think Shoe Corner got started because a bum was walking down the street, he tripped, his shoes fell off, he hit his head and he died. And they didn't know it was his shoes so they just left him there. Then there was a homeless family that needed shoes so people started leaving shoes there for him. And then that's how it evolved. I have heard of Shoe Corner and uh, I drive past it quite often. Uh, I just thought it was a bunch of kids that threw some shoes out one night and then, or one day, and then the next thing you know, it just snowballed from there. Then there was a little guy on a Cushman that used to ride around, you know, a little bike or something. He didn't have any shoes, so they left shoes for him. There's all kinds of old wives' tales 
The truth is, nobody knows how it started. I believe the story I, with the first motorcycle where the white go-go boot fell off the back and like in the middle of the intersection. But I believe it to be an older Honda four-cylinder motorcycle with, with a man and a woman riding double because I saw that. And then there was a white, like a go-go boot, high heel boot in the middle of the intersection. And Santa was right in the very middle. And then like a week later, she started carrying. I've heard a lot of stories. Uh, the one that I think is probably the most true is uh, there were migrant workers that were working and people saw they weren't wearing shoes and so people threw shoes there. This is back when the, it was a more of a farm community. It was before it was so, so much urbanization took place here. So I think it's uh, what's left over from an older time. No, I, I haven't seen anybody throw shoes, but I know that the, is once they clean them up, they try to clean them up and then there's more there You know, the very next day. <laughs> no, I have not seen anyone ever leave shoes there, but I would like to because I could find out what kind of people do that. You know, it's actually kind of comical because the radio stations in Chicago picked up on it. The newspapers in Chicago picked up on it. They've done stories about it. I have had uh, one of our banks in town took a professional photograph of it, framed it, and I have it hanging in my office. <laughs> so it's kind of like a local folklore, and nobody wants to mess with it. Everybody kind of likes the mystery around it, so that's why nobody messes with Shoe Corner. They just had it in the newspaper one time and then they really threw it there. What did you hear about the newspaper article? About what article? Uh, about that newspaper article? Out-of-towners are probably as curious as I was to see them. I have been tempted to take quite a few. They're very nice, way better than mine. Mostly Reeboks and running shoes and but yeah. nice boots. I saw a nice pair of boots there once too. Actually, no, there's not been any signs put up. No littering signs, no shoe dumping signs. Don't leave your shoes here, anything like that. We haven't put up any signage out there. And actually, if you go out there at any given time, there's shoes all the time. They're cleaned up and everybody always wonders where the shoes go. There's a lot of theories on that too. Everybody says that, you know, there's the guy on the corner who people know, he cleans them up. There's all these theories, but the truth is, the Lake County Highway Department picks the shoes up from time to time. But as soon as they clean them up, the very next morning, it's littered with shoes again. Yes, I have, because I've seen some really sweet, like, 1980s clogs that I thought would look hot on my wife. I'm just saying. Did that come out loud? I want to apologize for that. Well, I don't know. I think it's just something that's been going on and on and on. Nobody likes anything to change, so it's kind of like it's almost like a uh, like a not like a trademark, but what am I thinking? The uh, like a, yeah, like a traditional type of thing. I think it affects the community because it it shows that there's a history that's here and it's still continuing. I think everyone knows it's there in Sioux Corner, and they just. I'll end up there. They probably wish they had something like that in their town because a lot of towns are boring and you know Cedar Lake is is hopping and you come a little further south of Lowell it's even hopping there. Is that a word? Almost every local of the St. John area knows Shoe Corner. Many commuters visit the intersection every day. This intersection is so popular that local businesses put up advertisements on every available space. Advertised there is everything from real estate to local garage sales. Standing at the intersection that is Shoe Corner, we can see the development of St. John. It moves closer and closer to Shoe Corner every year. Shoe Corner has become such a tradition of this area. Will urbanization cause it to cease to exist? We haven't found one person who has actually seen someone discard a shoe here. Is this because our mystery people wait until the still of night to leave their shoes? Because they know they will not be seen? Located at Shoe Corner is this sign. The acres surrounding Shoe Corner are for sale. With this intersection being as busy as it is, how long until businesses begin to appear? Will our mystery people be too afraid to keep leaving shoes if the intersection is more populated? Will the legend of Shoe Corner live on after people stop leaving shoes here or will the local folklore fade out?
At the beginning, we put our imagination to the test. Inspired by all the rumors and stories we heard, we decided to reenact how we think the shoes appear at Shoe Corner. This may have been a little over the top. We couldn't help ourselves. But we were determined to film someone in the act of leaving shoes. We set up our cameras and waited. And this is what we saw. We didn't have any luck. Yet, we were happy we didn't. We didn't see a living soul or a new shoe soul appear. And honestly, I don't think we wanted to. Protecting the mystery of Shoe Corner is important. We hope Shoe Corner will be around for another 50 years and inspire others the way it inspired us, the locals, and we hope generations to come. Shoe Corner is traditional. A mystery. Fun. It's just fun. The oddest thing you've ever seen. It's crazy. Shoe Corner kicks ass.